Now for our second keynote. From 2000 until 2002, George Matolchi was Minister of Economic Affairs during the first government of Viktor Orban. And he went on to serve again as Minister for National Economy from 2010 to 2013, during which time Prime Minister Orban described the minister as his right hand. On March the 4th, 2013, he became governor of the National Bank of Hungary. In March of this year, he was appointed to a second six-year term as governor of Hungary's central bank. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mr. George Matolci. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear colleagues, friends. Um, once upon a time, a British Prime Minister was asked, Prime Minister, what are you afraid of? Events, events, and events, my friend. That was the answer. Why Hungary? Because we can make decisions. We can make decisions, right decisions. All of them can make the future for Hungary, for the region, for the Visegrad countries, and that's my understanding for Europe as well. So we've got in Hungary a government, I mean the prime minister and the government, a central bank, a business community, and all of them can get together and make the right decisions. Um, all these decisions um, resulted in outstanding um, turnarounds in Hungary. Uh, what about the secret of the looming Hungarian success story? My understanding is that um, all right decisions uh, uh, resulted in sweeping structural reforms. All these structural reforms resulted in turnarounds there are at least 12 of them. Um, I'm not, um, uh, I can't afford the luxury to pick one or two of them. All of them um, uh, contributed a lot to this looming Hungarian success story. So bold, courageous, right decisions on the part of both the government and the business sector, um, such reforms. I do not hedge the issue. We badly needed structural reforms, turnarounds, and um, just one more part of the, um, of the secret of Hungary. We managed to um, benefit from two different, foreign and domestic, two different uh, res financial resources. Firstly, um, of course, um, we benefited a lot from the European Union. Uh, let's um, uh, um, uh, put the record straight. We capitalized a lot on EU funds. More than 30 billion euros worth of EU funds uh, uh, um, uh, uh, were received in Hungary, and all of them contributed to all turnarounds of the country. On the other hand, and this is the part this is the other part of the story. This is the uh, other uh, part, other side of the same coin. The Hungarian Central Bank also managed to contribute uh, a lot to the financial turnaround of the country. Uh, when it comes to uh, interest savings of uh, the budget, uh, as for the uh, interest uh, 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 savings of the business sector and the banking sector as well, all other um, savings contributed to the financial turnaround of the Hungary economy. As you can spot it, the whole region um, has been catching up to the advanced uh, economies, and you can spot the red line, Hungary. Uh, we are on a um, um, uh, convergence path. We've been 
on a convergence path since uh, 2013. It's blatant, it's evident, we are on the right track to catch up with all other friends within the European Union. Um, in terms of um, taxation, Hungary um, proved to be successful uh, to overhaul taxation. The whole tax system was overhauled in the beginning of uh, this decade. And when it comes to the income tax rate in Hungary, uh, presently we've got one of the lowest rate within the European Union. It is a part of the story. Low taxes, low uh, PIT, personal income tax, and low, low uh, CIT, uh, corporate uh, income tax, both are vital uh, uh, for growth and for all other turnarounds of the country. The employment rate also increased, um, uh, the third most significantly uh, figure um, uh, can be spotted in Hungary. At the very heart of the economic policy of the government, you can find uh, employment, I mean um, um, the whole turnaround of, um, um, of, uh, of, of, of the labor market was uh, instrumental to the Hungarian success story. The corporate income tax rate um, uh, in Hungary is the lowest within the European Union. Sometimes, sometimes uh, by some friends, we are heavily criticized against this uh, drop of the rate of uh, um, uh, the corporate income tax, but it helps a lot. You know it well, we know it well, so we can safeguard this figure as well. In the European Union, Hungary has a continuously declining pub public debt uh, level since 2011. Actually, we've got the only one uh, to achieve this performance. And um, um, when it comes to uh, the public debt figure of the coming five years' time, we can easily spot uh, a below uh, 60% of public debt rate in five years' time. So it's a breakthrough, it's an outstanding performance due to all the uh, turnarounds of the country. Again, uh, declining external debt contributed tremendously to the improvement of Hungary's risk assessment. You can spot the red line, it was really red. It was alarming, it was disastrous, it was awful. But by now, uh, it is well below the former uh, high levels. And um, uh, by um, uh, 2021, the red line will be very close to zero. By definition, meaning that we'll be out of the woods. Excellencies, um, ladies and gentlemen, the decrease in interest uh, expenditures is outstanding in international um, uh, comparison. It again uh, means a lot for the budget, having much lower uh, interest uh, uh, expenditures. And due to the uh, lowering of our public debt level and also due to the monetary policy turnaround of the National Bank of Hungary, they both resulted in this excellent achievement. Why is Hungary attractive? Um, yes, uh, some reasons were spotted in the, in, the, in the previous chart, but why don't we have a look at the so-called complexity map of the world? It means that Hungary is one of the most complex economies in the world, out of 133 countries. Um, I mean, all Visegrad countries are in a very good shape uh, to be a part of the uh, global networks. But Hungary is, again, in a very good position. Um, in terms of um, um, investment in the region, Hungary is uh, really a popular uh, country to invest in. The whole region is popular. The whole Central European region. We Hungarians, I must admit, uh, we Hungarians tend to regard Germany, 
Austria, Serbia, and the Visegrad countries as parts, as members of the Central European region. So the whole region is really attractive, not only Hungary, but we are proud of uh, Hungary's uh, achievements uh, uh, in, uh, in this area. Hungary investment rate is outstanding within the European Union. It bodes well for the future, having high investment rates by definition means that you can invest heavily in the future. And we've been doing that. So the red line again is a promising line. It's not a threatening line. It's really promising. And it's outstanding that uh, all members of the Hungarian business community contributed to this uh, um, uh, excellent uh, uh, achievement. As for the tax rate paid by an average Hungarian small and medium-sized enterprise, um, the average tax rate has significantly declined and reached the level of the EU average. Again, the backbone of uh, the Hungarian economy, yes, the SME sector. Um, all our endeavors uh, aim for um, a much stronger and much more competitive SME sector. And um, um, the average tax rate, uh, the lowering of the average tax rate of the SME sector um, has already contributed a lot to the um, uh, improvements in the SME uh, sector. The share of um, exports of services continuously increased in Hungary. It is um, above the Visegrad uh, 3 average, but I must say it is one of the most promising signal of the whole region's uh, future success. When it comes to services, it is the future. Um, services can be provided um, uh, via SMEs, via uh, our brilliant uh, uh, global corporations, so we've got um, a very good um, uh, trend in the right direction. Excellencies, um, dear friends, dear colleagues, um, also uh, Hungary spends more on research and development than the Visegrad 3 average. It is still in the middle of the EU, uh, of the EU ranking, uh, we know that, but, but we are on the right track to spend more and more and to spend uh, on the most, single most promising um, uh, projects uh, uh, in terms of research and development. Also, the Hungarian digital economy is the fourth biggest um, in the European Union. It is also telling. When it comes to the digital economy, uh, is the future. We all know that. We spotted it in the in the previous uh, excellent uh, uh, intervention. Um, the so-called 4G, it is still 4G. We'll have the 5G, but it is still 4G. When it comes to the 4G uh, coverage, uh, uh, it's not bad. The third position is not bad. Uh, we, have to, uh, we have to upgrade it, of course, but uh, it's really promising. Um, Three different trans-European uh, network corridors are crossing Hungary. So when it comes to traditional physical infrastructure, it is also promising. I mean, from the point of view of a business location, it's really promising. Also, we've got a north-south corridor, which uh, uh, will be built. It is also a, a good uh, um, signal for all future investors. Anyway, Hungary has a rich historical heritage, heritage, historic and cultural heritage. And we all know that uh, economic growth uh, is based on culture by now. And history and culture, they are uh, magic twins. Finally, um, when, it comes, when it comes to nomads, um, to to some extent, we are all nomads uh, uh, when it comes to city breaks and some other uh, touristic uh, uh, plans. But when it comes to nomads, uh, 
uh, and according to the nomad list, Budapest is currently the best place for a digital nomad to stay and work. Please do come and invest in Hungary. Thank you. Thank you.